Welcome to the MD Newsline webcast. MD Newsline is an education platform that improves health outcomes for patients of color by providing information that increases the cultural competence of healthcare providers and empowers patients to advocate for themselves. Today's webcast is covering the topic of eczema, also known as atopic dermatitis. I'm Dr. Eddie John Kaminska, and I am a board-certified dermatologist. I'm Dr. Beth Adams. I'm a board-certified dermatologist. I'm your moderator, Larissa, and this is MD Newsline. Let's start with the basics. What is eczema? Eczema is a type of rash that the body makes. It's an immune response. Basically, what happens is the immune system breaks down in the skin and produces an itchy, sometimes scaly rash that can be very uncomfortable quite common actually. It's very common in skin of color and it tends to happen in younger kids but some people do develop it later in life as well. And it can be so uncomfortable. Um, we don't know what causes it, why it happens, but there's definitely a genetic component. Definitely. People are often, babies can be born with eczema, usually develops within the first six months of life or so and for people with bad genetic eczema it can last up until school age but sometimes it continues into adulthood as well. Eczema impacts a wide variety of people. How does this specifically affect skin of color? Oh, well, definitely skin of color. Actually, babies and children, skin of color, they have a higher rate of eczema. And it sometimes can go undiagnosed or even misdiagnosed because rashes look different in different skin types. And how it can look different in skin of color, especially in African-American skin, um, eczema can usually present as papular or like little bumps on the skin versus scaly red itchy patches which you can see in Caucasian skin or fairer skin types. Um, in Asian skin sometimes it presents more as what we describe as numular or round shaped patches on the skin. So it can look very different depending on the skin type. Exactly and so sometimes it can be a challenge especially in parents of children of skin of color, if you don't have a dermatologist who's familiar with the different patterns of eczema in different skin types. To add on to what Dr. Adams said, it's really important to remember that in African-American skin, especially darker skin types like myself, it doesn't necessarily present as red or pink. It tends to present as more of a purplish color, or purplish hue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's how inflammation can present in darker skin types. Common areas of eczema include, especially in young people, like in front of the elbows, behind the knees, mm -hmm. sometimes on the neck and scalp and babies. Exactly. Babies, they can have eczema everywhere. Head to toe, they can be itchy and scratchy. In adulthood, sometimes eczema localizes to certain areas, like the hands in particular, really common place for eczema to appear. Wow. So what is itchiness? Well, itchiness, it's a... It's a chemical sensation that your skin sends to your brain caused by the inflammation in your skin. And it can be really uncomfortable. A lot of people say that it's worse than pain. Mm -hmm. What yeah. does scratching do for that? Scratching, we're not exactly sure, but somehow scratching causes a mechanical sensation which distracts your body from that itch signal. So even though scratching feels really good when you're scratching your eczema, it actually can make it worse and your itch can be worse later on. Right. I mean, scratching can relieve it temporarily, like Dr. Adams mentioned, but it can be so uncomfortable um, afterwards. And making it worse, you can get an infection of the skin from too much scratching because it breaks the skin barrier. Exactly. And the skin barrier, that's the major thing in eczema because your skin isn't able to hold on to moisture as much. And so you dry out, you get inflamed. And like Dr. Kaminska mentioned, you can get infected. Your own skin bacteria can cause a problem. And that happens a lot in babies and kids as well. Let's talk about home remedies. What are some of the best ones? So with the um, Vaseline, plain Vaseline, no scents, no fragrances. <laughs> we want it just hypoallergenic if possible um, because eczema skin can be sensitive to even fragrances and scents. Um, we really want the skin barrier to be repaired. So eczema is a condition that affects the skin barrier. It's not normal. It's not normal skin. So we want thick, heavy um, moisturizers that can repair that skin barrier and help it to heal. Right, and along with that, it, you don't want any harsh soap. So a lot of times soaps, imagine for your hands, antibacterial soaps or infant soaps that have a lot of dyes or perfumes, those can be bad. So you want to stick with something that's really gentle, something that is not going to overstrip the skin and dry it out. 
And that goes back to not only soaps, but detergent, right? <laughs> so scent-free, fragrance-free detergent, comfortable, soft clothing, like cotton-based clothing, which is a natural fiber. It's easy to breathe. We think about those things as well. Definitely. There are a lot of home remedies on social media floating around. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the worst things that you can do to manage your eczema? Oh my goodness, right. So I, <laughs> I know a lot of people will use things to help alleviate the itch and they think that that's helping the eczema. So things like rubbing alcohol or aloe. But what happens is that temporarily helps the itch by by evaporating off the skin but it dries you out so it goes against everything that we've been wanting to accomplish with eczema treatment what are some of the funniest things you've heard for Ooh. me <laughs> snake oil scorpion soap <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> scorpion soap so yeah all sorts of things so you know better not to get your advice from social mm -hmm. media when it comes to eczema treatment <laughs> um some of the other things that i've heard um apple cider vinegar oh yes yeah which can also dry the skin out we want to try to avoid um, things that make the skin more irritated so what can people do what are some of the over-the-counter products people can use for eczema one of my favorite products um, is Aveeno Eczema Baby. Yes. It is very wow. gentle. It's got some. It's got oatmeal in it. Um, collodial oatmeal helps with inflammation in the skin. It can calm itch down. It can make the skin calm down and feel better. And it is wonderful. I think it's a wonderful product. Other other products that I like: Eucerin over the counter, Aquaphor, Cerave. There's so many safe skin products that can be used for eczema that will do no harm, <laughs> but also in, it can even improve it. What I find is when I go to the store, sometimes I'll see people in the lotion section and they look totally lost. There's so many good options. And so when in doubt, I say, if you have really bad eczema, look for something that's in a jar. If something comes through a pump, oftentimes it's a little too thin for what we're looking for. It's so it's Thicker creams, exactly. So it doesn't have to be too sticky that you can't live your life, but something that's going to be a little more moisturizing or a little moly. And look for a jar, not a pump. And then you want to look for things with ceramides. We mentioned that earlier. Those help to repair the skin barrier. Um, things such as moisturizers, so emollients. We're looking for ingredients that help heal the skin. And a lot of products will say for eczema. Yeah. And usually, over-the-counter products that say for eczema are typically, typically safe. Typically, yeah. right. If something has fragrance or dye, better to steer clear because that can irritate your eczema. How do the different seasons affect eczema? Well, typically eczema flares in cold, dry weather, um, which is winter season. Exactly. <laughs> that is our peak season for eczema for the most part. Exactly, but I find that in a lot of young, healthy, active adults, sweaty hot summer days can make their eczema worse as well, especially hand eczema. I think it's also really important to talk about pigmentation in skin of color, um, specifically with regards to eczema. Once the eczema is gone, it can leave dark or light spots. That can be equally as distressing for patients as the eczema itself. So treatment options to consider, especially when it's warm or hot outside with a lot of sun exposure is wearing sunscreen. Definitely. That allows dark spots to fade. One thing that I found is that sometimes, especially in little kids, in babies, parents are most concerned. Babies will present not with an eczema rash, but with whitish spots. It's a specific type of eczema in younger children of color. And so just knowing the signs and knowing to address it early so it doesn't progress is important. But yes, sunscreen. For all skin types, sunscreen. Yes, for all skin types, <laughs> the sunscreen is important for everyone. So should people with eczema go to the spa, get facial treatments? I get very nervous about <laughs> spa treatments in patients with eczema. As we know, their skin barrier is not normal and they can react to a lot of things with fragrance. Exactly, and it's impossible to predict if someone has eczema in one part of their body, they're potentially prone to be sensitive anywhere. So again, we can't control, we don't know what is going on their face for the facial. Are they going to have a reaction to it? So it is something you need to be cautious about. Is eczema linked to any other illnesses? It certainly can be. There's a, there's a classic pattern where people can have genetic eczema, asthma and allergies, but I find that eczema is so common, a lot of people come in and, and don't have those other issues. So it's not caused by one specific thing, it's not linked to one specific illness, but yes, I always look out for asthma or allergies 
in people with eczema. Those three things are called the atopic triad. It has mm -hmm. a name to it. I always let my patients know that if someone has eczema in their family, then they're maybe prone to allergies and asthma. Even if you have one, you can have one out of the three, two out of the three, or three out of the three. We think that it may be due to the same pathways in different organ systems. So you know, our body is just one organ system. So we've got our skin, which is the largest organ system of the body. Then we've got our lungs, which is a separate system. And we've got the sinuses. We think it's the same thing happening, but just in a different organ system. Histamine is a big factor. Histamine is the chemical that makes your nose itch and your eyes water and your skin itch. So it seems to be a common factor among all those things. That's going back to the itching question. So a <laughs> great point. Over-the-counter antihistamines can be helpful Definitely. for eczema. It can help relieve that itching sensation versus the scratching, which can destroy the skin barrier and cause more problems. Definitely. I often recommend a, a long-acting, non-sedating antihistamine. You don't want one that's short-acting and makes you drowsy, but something long-acting can be really helpful, like Claritin. Does eczema, allergies, asthma disproportionately affect skin of color? So with skin of color, specifically in African American community, there, there is data that shows that they may not go to the doctor immediately because there's, there may be some mistrust in the medical community, or when they present to the doctor, it's at a much later stage in the disease course. So with your question, does it affect the, disproportionately affect skin of color? It may or may not. <laughs> Science moves quickly. What are some of the new treatment options available? Oh my goodness, with <laughs> so much, you know, the world has changed so much, it's, right. it's incredible. What, before we had the basic understanding of what eczema is mm -hmm. and we couldn't target a specific pathway. It was just general treatment. Moisturize, we know that steroids, topical corticosteroids, like hydrocortisone over the counter, for example, can help calm down inflammation. But now there are targeted pathways for eczema. And some of those targeted pathways include biologics. Mm -hmm. Those are medications that are injectable that can control the itch and can control the rash. And it has changed the quality of life for so many patients. It's really exciting, you know, to, to witness these new treatments emerge that are so targeted because in the past it was basically Vaseline and a topical steroid. And for years and years, we were basically stuck with steroids as our only option. And they do have their place in the treatment, but it's nice now to have the injectable treatments. And there are now topical medicines that are non-steroid treatments, so they're much safer. So we have a much wider range of treatment options to offer our patients. Yeah, we've got this great portfolio of products <laughs> that we can choose it's a from. Treasure chest. Yeah, for our patients, it's amazing. I mean, there's also a new class of medication called JAK inhibitors, mm -hmm. and it targets a specific pathway, the JAK pathway, JAK stat pathway for eczema, and it comes with a whole host of potential side effects, but it can be game-changing for people that may need it. What are your guys' thoughts on topical steroids? Well, I definitely think topical steroids, when used appropriately, have a place. And they're, I tell my patients, think of it like a fire extinguisher. And you want to make sure you're using the right strength and the right vehicle. That's what the steroid is in. Sometimes I'll have people come from other providers or other clinics and they're using a steroid that is not safe for them to use or might even be worsening the condition. But I make sure my patients know steroids are not a maintenance, they're not a cure for eczema, but they're a tool. They're a tool for flares that can be helpful. Going along with Dr. Adams' analogy, is imagine you light a match and you <laughs> extinguish that match with um, a fire extinguisher, <laughs> right? So we have to, it does have its place when used appropriately. I mean, some of the side effects with long-term use of topical steroids for all skin types includes, it can thin the skin, it can cause stretch marks, especially in the areas of thin skin, like the front of the elbows, right behind the knees. And we've seen this, we've seen the horror stories and or the skin can become dependent on it. Exactly. Like if you stop it, then your skin goes berserk. Your rash comes right back again and it's 10 times worse. Right. Right, so they're used with caution. It's a tool, but as long as you know that it's not a maintenance, it's not a cure, it's not something meant to be used long term, then they, they have their place. And to piggyback off of um, what Dr. Adams said, 
there is no cure for eczema. We manage it. We manage it. Sometimes it will, what we call burn out. It will burn out, meaning that it just miraculously seems to go away. But it is in your genetics, right? So if you have it, you have it. Sometimes it quiets down, sometimes it revs back up. We can't predict that, but what we can do is make sure that patients are treated appropriately. For patients of color, I think it's also important to add that if you have eczema that affects the scalp, you don't have to wash your hair every day. That can make your hair fall out, especially in black, thick, curly hair, like my hair. Um, you can use products like topical steroids that can help calm down the inflammation or the other product, products that we mentioned. Um, but seeing a board certified dermatologist, especially familiar with skin of color, is very important to make sure that you're treated appropriately and that you feel comfortable with your provider. All patients should advocate for themselves, especially skin of color patients. It is okay if you don't find the perfect provider right away. You can seek a second opinion and find someone that makes you feel comfortable and can hear you out and make sure that I, the way I view patient care is that we work together as a team. It's teamwork. It's important that you feel comfortable with what you're using and that I provide my professional expertise, but it needs to come together. It's a partnership and you need to be able to feel comfortable. As a board certified dermatologist, we have the unique role that skin is all we do. And so if you find as a patient that you are going back to your regular provider, your regular doctor time after time, and your eczema is not getting better or your concern isn't being addressed, that's what we're here for. That's what a board certified dermatologist does. We'll treat your skin. And like Dr. Kamenska mentioned, we're a team. We make it a team decision. I'm Larissa. Thank you for tuning in. I am Dr. Beth Adams. I am Dr. Eddie Dion Kamenska, and this is MD Newsline.